Hi, welcome back to Bible Bites. In this video, I want to talk about thirst. Have you ever been so thirsty that the only thing you can focus on is your thirst? Nothing else matters. You stop whatever it is that you're doing. You lose focus for everything else and the only thing you can do is stop everything and try to find some source to quench your thirst. Well, isn't it also interesting that we can find lots of things to quench our thirst? But as you know, and as doctors have been telling us for decades, that the best thirst quencher is water. Regular intake of water is what quenches our thirst and does our body the most good. We should be going after uh, other things that can actually cause us to become dehydrated. Things like coffee uh, or alcohol. Or I've also noticed that whenever I drink, um, I'll get into these little kicks or routines where I'm drinking uh, a lot of pop or soda. And they can tend to coat the inside of your mouth and make you thirsty for more. It's almost like the more soda you drink, the more soda you want to drink. Well, let's equate this idea of thirst, um, this desire to quench our, our need, our want for liquid intake. Let's equate that with desires for other things in our life for joy, for satisfaction, for entertainment, um, to gain possessions, you know, to gain the newest electronic thing or the newest uh, four-wheel vehicle or whatever it might be, we have desires or a thirst for other things in our life. And we think that these things are going to satisfy. But just like drinking coffee um, can dehydrate you and is not truly good for you, only water thirsts. Well, there's other things in life as well that only provide a temporary satisfaction. They're not what's truly good for us, deep within us, within the soul or essence of our being. Scripture talks about this. We were created and designed by God to thirst for him, to thirst after righteousness. I want to take a look at several passages to kind of show us uh, what it is that we're supposed to thirst after. The first place is in Psalm 42. I want to look at the first four verses. Look at them with me. As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember, and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in procession, to the house of God, with the voice of joy and thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. What we have here is David is acknowledging the fact that he was designed, that his very soul needs to thirst after God. And then things in life become a distraction, and he starts to focus his desires, and his wants on other things. And then he, he notices that as he begins to pull away from God or go in a different direction, that life is no longer satisfying. And then with tears, he weeps day and night. Where is God? Where is your God? Other, peop other people can see that there's a change. And then he remembers. He remembers... 
I used to go to the house of God. I used to lead others and bring them with me into the house of God. And that's where my joy and my satisfaction were. David realized then that nothing else satisfies. Only God can quench our thirst. Now let's take a look at another psalm in Psalm 107. And I just want to look at verses 8 and 9. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. For he has satisfied the thirsty soul and the hungry soul he has filled with what is good. People have needs. God built us that way. We don't get to drink once and then we'll never thirst again. We're going to thirst again later that day, certainly into the next day. Same thing with eating. You don't just eat one meal a day. You eat throughout the day, and you need to eat again the next day. God designed the body to have daily needs. As with other things, we, we need uh, interaction with one another. We need a sense of community, a sense of belonging, where others can help us and where we can help other people. That sense of community, of depending on one another. God designed us that way, that we need things in our life. But there's nothing more that we need that is greater than God himself. And he satisfies our thirst. He satisfies our hunger. The very essence, the soul within us is satisfied when we regularly keep a diet of God in our life. I want to take a look at one more passage, and this one comes out of the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35. Jesus is speaking here, and this is uh, shortly after he had had that encounter with the woman, uh, the Samaritan woman at the well, when he talks about the living water. Well, that was shared with just one person. He later, two chapters uh, later, brings this up again with the whole people, with the crowd. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. So Jesus, the Son of God, is being explicit here in his direction of what it is that mankind needs. We were created with a hunger and a thirst. And there are lots of things that we can find in this world that can provide that, from water and food to all the other desires that we might have in life. And they will provide temporary satisfaction, but then that fades. Jesus is explicitly telling us here that he, and he alone, since he is the creator of all things, including us, and he designed us with this need for God, this desire, or as others uh, have put it uh, so well in the past, we have this God-shaped hole within the center of our very being. And nothing else will fit that. Like a jigsaw uh, puzzle piece, there's only one piece in the whole world that will fit that hole. And that's God. And Jesus is saying that desire, that thirst, that hunger can only be filled by me. So I would encourage you to contemplate on this as you go about your day and the rest of your week and think about all the different things that you turn to when you have a, a desire for something. When you're sitting reading in the chair and all of a sudden you begin to uh, slowly build this discomfort and it causes you to put the book down, get up, and go do something, 
that will fill your need, recognize that you have this desire. Whatever it might be for, something caused you to get up because you have a desire for something. Stop right there in that moment and think that there's no greater desire that we have than the one we have for God. And nothing else can satisfy and quench that thirst than God himself. So think about that and let it draw you closer and closer to God himself. And nurse that thirst every day for the word of God to draw closer and closer to him. Well, I pray this helps deepen your walk with God and to help you realize that innate thirst that we have within us. And may you always go to the source, the well of living water, Jesus Christ himself. So until next time, I pray that God blesses you, that he keeps you, and that he gives you his peace. 